Same sata sada huntu awe las chukajiwi now. We chant that toward the end of every chant in the evening, in the morning. That's spreading goodwill. Katang bunya palama yang sebe pagi bon today. That's dedicating merit. Now, both of these sentiments come from basically the goodness of the heart that wants to share its goodness, but they go about it in different ways. When you spread thoughts of goodwill, that's totally up to you. You can dedicate it, spread goodwill to as many people as you want. You can spread goodwill to all beings everywhere, or you can focus it on particular people you know are suffering or going through a difficult period. They don't have to know. And you do it both for them and for you. There are stories in the canon of the Buddhists spreading goodwill to people. And it changed them. There was one Malin named Roja, who one day went to the monastery. And Ananda was surprised to see him because he knew that he had a lot of pride. So he asked him, what are you doing here? And Roger said, well, I'm not here because I want to be here. There was an agreement down in the city that if anyone didn't come to the monastery, they'd be fined. And Ananda thought that was pretty disgraceful. So he asked the Buddha, could you spread some goodwill to this guy? And so the Buddha did. And the next day, Roja came to the monastery and said, Where is the Buddha? Where is the Buddha? He said, It was like a calf looking for its mother. In other cases where the Buddha spread goodwill to the people who had been sent by Devadatta to kill him, as soon as they saw him, there was no question in the mind. They were not going to kill him at all. So there are times when goodwill can have an effect, but that the other person is really knowing where it came from and why. There's a story they tell in Thailand, and John Fun. One night he learned that there had been a seizure of the Israeli embassy in Bangkok by some terrorists. And this was right at the time there was going to be a large, very important ceremony in the palace. It was going to mar the ceremony to have this event going on. So he spent the whole night sitting up, meditating, spreading thoughts of goodwill. Next morning he told one of his attended monks at 6 a.m., he said, okay, the crisis is over. And then a few hours later the word came by the radio that the, the terrorists had been willing to leave the embassy. So the story is like this. You may say, well, my concentration is not that strong. But still, it's good to spread thoughts of goodwill when you can. The world has so much ill will. The atmosphere, the mental atmosphere, the emotional atmosphere of the world is very negative right now. So it's good to spread some thoughts of goodwill to make it a little bit more positive, or as much more positive as you can manage. The thing about spreading thoughts of goodwill is that when you spread those thoughts, it doesn't stop there. There's a responsibility that goes with them, which is to carry through. And although you may be spreading goodwill to beings far away, you start carrying through with the people who are right close to you. This is an intention that you should follow through with. In other words, it places a certain responsibility on you. All too often you hear stories about people on meditation retreats spreading thoughts of goodwill for weeks. May all beings be happy, may all beings be happy. They get into a car to leave. Somebody cuts in front of them, well, may this being go to hell. Which is, shows that the goodwill didn't take. For it to take, for it to take you have to think through. What are the situations where you have ill will for people? And think it through. Why it's not 
a wise response or a useful response, why it's counterproductive. As the Buddha said, if you had ill will for anybody, it's a sign you have a wrong view. It's interesting, we think of ill will as part of wrong resolve, but it's also a wrong view. That somehow you would benefit from seeing other people suffer. So you go through the cases where you have ill will for people and try to reason with yourself. So that when you meet up with these people, you find it easier to have the right attitude so you're not going to say or do or think anything that's going to be harmful. So basically the dynamic is that you're the only one who has to know that you're spreading thoughts of goodwill. Some people may pick it up. I know of cases where I've spread thoughts of goodwill to people and they ask the next day, did you spread thoughts of goodwill last night? There are cases where people pick it up, but whether they know or not, it's purely an individual affair. And as I said, there's a responsibility that goes with it afterwards. Those are the two areas where spreading thoughts of goodwill and dedicating merit are different. Because with dedicating merit, the person to whom you're dedicating it has to know. This is one of the reasons why the Buddha basically talked about dedicating merit to people who passed away. Because there are beings on certain levels that can pick it up. The primary ones are hungry ghosts. This is their food. This is the merit dedicated to them. But for them to be able to partake of that food, they have to approve. It's not always the case that they would know, or if they did know, it's not always the case that they would approve. I knew this one man in Bangkok who lived in a condominium in an area where there used to be a Catholic, Catholic church and a Catholic cemetery. The church had been abandoned, and so the church had been destroyed, the cemetery, all the bones and everything had been dug, dug up and moved away. And they built the condominium over it. Well, people in the condominium were having visions and dreams of old Catholics coming and harassing them. So one day he was meditating in his apartment, and he saw this Catholic nun standing in the apartment. And so he thought, okay, I dedicate the merit of my meditation to you. And she said, I don't want your Buddhist merit. Which means, of course, that she's still going to hang around. She doesn't get any further than that. The other person has to know and approve. Because that's how the merit gets transferred. You can't just give somebody merit. They have to think it's, see it as a good thing. And then once you've dedicated the merit, then there's no further responsibility. You get more merit because you wanted to dedicate it. But whether the other person actually receives it, that's the other person's business. That's the other person's responsibility. And John Fung had a student who had, had a tendency to see hungry ghosts in different places. And at first she didn't like it. She wanted, it was like having a TV that she wanted to turn off. He said, look, you're in a position where you can help these people. He said, if you encounter one, Dedicate the merit of your meditation. But before you do that, ask them, what did they do to get born on that level? And then dedicate merit. And she said she'd ask questions, and she found out that oh, someone had killed somebody, and, and she'd learned all kinds of things about karma. And I think it was a good lesson for her, because she, before she'd become a, become a meditator, she'd like to dabble in what she, what you call white magic. And the thing about people who dabble in magic is they don't really believe in karma. They think they can get around karma with their spells. And seeing the results of karma was a good lesson for her. And then she'd dedicate merit to these, the hungry ghosts. And sometimes it was as if they changed their clothes and they moved off. 
But there are a couple of cases where they didn't get any improvement at all. So now she complained about that. He went to John Fu and he said, look, you've done your business, you've done your duty. Whether they can receive it or not, it's up to their karma. You don't have to tabulate the results of your, of your, of your merit. So in both cases, dedicating merit, excuse me, dedicating merit, and then spreading thoughts of goodwill. These are signs of the goodness of the heart. You want to, you've got some something good, and you want to share. But the way in which you share is going to be different. What's especially important to remember is that thoughts of goodwill are not meant to stop simply with the thoughts. You want to be able to act on them as best you can. As the Buddha said, this is one of the causes for harmony in a group. Physical actions of goodwill, verbal actions of goodwill, mental actions of goodwill. He had a list of six qualities altogether. And those are the first three. He could have simply said actions of goodwill, but reduced the list to four. But I think he wanted to emphasize that half of having the group get along is the goodwill that you bring to it. The other three qualities are having being generous with any special gains you get, having virtue on the level of the, the noble ones in common, having right view in common. These are the things that give rise to harmony in the group. But as I said, half of it is goodwill. So take some time to generate thoughts of goodwill. We read the news, and there's a lot of a lot of things happening in the world that we can't have an effect on, at least in an ordinary way. But at least spread thoughts of goodwill to people who are suffering, or people who are in conflict. And maybe, just maybe, adding some good energy to the mental atmosphere of the world might be able to help. And at the very least, it makes you a better person, a person with a more expansive mind. Able to sympathize with all kinds of people. They're willing to keep their true happiness in mind.